Ubuntu and Arch Linux are two of the hottest, two of the most popular Linux distros today. The two giants of the Linux world. But I wouldn't be wrong in saying that these two distros are the complete opposite of each other. On one side, Ubuntu is a polished, user-friendly and ready-to-use out-of-the-box system while Arch Linux is the ultimate do-it-yourself project, giving you unmatched power and bleeding-edge tech. Yeah, it's miles ahead in terms of technology. And recently, Arch Linux finally simplified its installation process with the Arch install program. And with it, Arch Linux becomes much easier to install and get started with. So is it finally time for you to give the fabled advanced distro Arch Linux a try or stick with the ever popular Ubuntu? I mean, it's the world's most widely used distro for a reason, right? To answer that, I installed both Arch and Ubuntu and spent time testing them out in depth. And in this video, I'm putting all that information in front of you. How they compare against each other in terms of performance, stability, software availability, and finally see which distro comes out on top, Ubuntu or Arch Linux. Let's jump right in. Both Ubuntu and Arch Linux take very different routes as far as the user interface is concerned. This is really interesting. First, let me clarify that both these distros provide all the desktop environment options, but there's more to it. Let's start with Arch Linux. When you download and boot into Arch Linux ISO file, you actually don't see any desktop environment. You just get the command line interface. And for someone who is not well acquainted with the terminal, this can be a jarring effect. But during installation, you are provided all the desktop options like GNOME, KDE Plasma, Cinnamon, LXQT and many others. I selected GNOME desktop environment because that's my jam. You are getting GNOME desktop in its purest form here. This is GNOME as it's intended to be used without any additional touch-ups and add-ons. Now Ubuntu 2 gives us the same GNOME desktop, but there's a huge difference in the final experience that you are going to get here. Ubuntu's GNOME is customized with canonical touches. It brings its own Yaru theme with distinct orange accents, a left side dock that's always visible, and other certain GNOME extensions enabled by default that create a particular kind of workflow. But you have to agree, it provides a very polished and integrated feel. On the other hand, Arch Linux gives you vanilla GNOME or any other desktop option that you have chosen. The standard Advaita theme, the activities overview, and you don't get an always on dock unless you add it manually here. I think this aligns with Arch Linux principle where it lets you do whatever you want to make of it. A do-it-yourself approach. Ubuntu's interface is more pre-configured and ready to go. While on Arch Linux, you can tweak, add extensions and create your own workflow or just use it as it is. The underlying GNOME workflow of using activities overviews, workspaces, this app grid, it's the same on both. But Ubuntu's always on dock on the left side definitely makes it easier to launch your favorite apps and switch between apps. It's a one-click process here, while on vanilla GNOME, it's a two-step process. I'm very used to using GNOME both ways, so for me, the friction was very less, but this can be a deciding factor for some people. Ultimately, user interface is a very subjective matter. You might like orange, I might like blue. And the thing about GNOME desktop is, it's highly customizable. Change a few extensions and GNOME can become unrecognizably different. So let's give both these distributions a point each and move forward. Arch Linux and Ubuntu are both famous for their installation processes in the Linux community and for completely opposite reasons. Ubuntu is very simple and straightforward to install and get started with. Download the ISO file, flash it onto a USB stick, live boot into it and the installer will guide you through the necessary steps like choosing the install location, language, setting up a user account, drivers and such. Really, this is very beginner friendly and the simple installation process is one of the biggest reasons for Ubuntu's popularity. Arch Linux. Oh sweet Arch Linux. Installing Arch Linux is an explicit process. Arch Linux is an absolute DIY project and it needs your time and patience. Above all, you will have to have that attitude of putting in a few hours to learn something to be able to install Arch Linux. Recently, this has been made exponentially more user-friendly through the introduction of the Arch install script that makes installing Arch less daunting. Before this, I'm not kidding, but Arch Linux was only for the true Linux elitist. I really loved Arch Linux and that's the only reason I could sit through hours of following guides and reading help material to install and configure Arch in the older days. But with the newer Arch install script, Arch Linux becomes simpler and more accessible to a wider audience because of its friendly nature. I wouldn't go as far as calling it beginner friendly because it's not. 
This is a command line application and someone who's new to Linux will have problems navigating this. Yeah, I won't sugarcoat things here. But compared to the old way of installing Arch Linux, this is tremendous progress. What used to take me hours now takes me just a few minutes. And you can follow the Arch Linux installation video linked in the description to actually see how simple everything is now. Ubuntu has always prioritized user friendliness and that intuitive feeling and confidence you get when you look at the UI. So in the installation section, Ubuntu takes a point home because the difference in how easy Ubuntu is to get started with compared to Arch Linux is quite huge. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Continuing the trend of being as different from each other as possible, Ubuntu and Arch Linux bring completely different experiences in their software availability and package management department. Let me start off by saying that Ubuntu is the world's most popular Linux distro and as such gets first class software support from all the software creators out there. If a software exists for Linux, it will be first made available and optimized for Ubuntu. That's just how it is. And this advantage of Ubuntu is absolutely undeniable. And let's talk about snaps. Love them or hate them. They are a big part of the Ubuntu experience and at this moment they cannot be ignored. So what are snaps exactly? Well, Snaps are Ubuntu solution for cross-distro app packaging. They are containerized applications that bundle all their dependencies and a sandbox for security. They update automatically in the background and they are considerably easier for software developers to work with. Sounds great in theory, right? And they are. For most people, they are really convenient. I'll talk about the drawbacks of these snaps in a bit, but right now, all you have to focus on is that these snaps significantly enhance the software catalog on Ubuntu. Many top software vendors like Google, Microsoft, Nextcloud, Spotify and many more bring their software on Ubuntu only in snap format. And as a software developer, I myself have benefited greatly from these snaps. Arch Linux has a completely different philosophy with software delivery. Arch Linux is a bleeding edge Linux distro, meaning all the software and packages available here are generally the newest versions of those software or are very close. In contrast, Ubuntu lags significantly behind in version numbers to prioritize stability. Now this is completely up to you. If you are someone who works with mission critical systems and needs stability and reliability over anything, then Ubuntu is going to be the right choice for you. But if you are okay or even prefer using the latest of all the software and technology, Arch Linux is right up your alley. But you have to remember that the words bleeding edge and stability are not synonymous. Expect some excitement with Arch Linux and not always in the good way. Things can break with Arch Linux. Arch Linux software repositories contain a good number of packages across categories. Development tools, utilities, office stuff, games, there's a good collection here. But the true power of Arch Linux comes from the AUR or the Arch user repository. This repository uses build scripts that are basically instructions to automatically download and build virtually any application you can think of directly on your computer without depending on any additional packaging. Literally every Linux software available via one community curated system. And with AUR helpers like Ye, installing from this repository becomes nearly indistinguishable from installing native packages. For power users, the AUR is absolutely irreplaceable. If you are a tinkerer and you try out new and upcoming software, the AUR really becomes a one-stop shop. The bottom line here, Ubuntu offers accessibility and structure while Arch Linux offers total control and that absolute freedom. But both of these distros have phenomenal software availability. Easily the best two distros in this matter. All that's left is for you to choose your weapon. Both get a point each year. When we talk about performance, both Ubuntu 24.04 and Arch Linux are very capable systems and run very fast and smooth. Both are optimized to deliver the best possible performance on any hardware. But Arch Linux minimalist and rolling release nature can give it a slight edge in certain scenarios. I know Arch users and they will have no problem and in fact prefer handpicking each and everything that will be installed and run on their computers. And Arch Linux facilitates exactly this. So it starts as a very minimal system and you only install the services and software you explicitly want. This lean setup when utilized properly can lead to lower memory and disk usage on a fresh Arch install compared to Ubuntu's default installation. 
Ubuntu 2 now gives you an option to install a very minimal Ubuntu installation without any additional applications. This can give you the same clean slate advantage but not to the same degree though. Ubuntu Snap apps are infamous for being performance hogs, although that has improved to an extent now. Firstly, launching Snap apps for the first time once you start your computer can be quite slow, as Snap apps bundle all the dependencies, libraries along with them. And the whole thing needs to be mounted as a volume and there's a lot of complexity involved in something as simple as launching an app with snaps. Because of the same reasons, they also take up way more storage space which has recently been annoying me. To sum up everything here, if you run benchmarks, both Ubuntu and Arch Linux will pretty much perform similarly in things like compiling, rendering and gaming. You might notice a performance difference of a couple of percentages, that's it. But when it comes to responsiveness, Arch Linux is definitely going to feel more nimbler and snappy. I would by no means call Ubuntu slower, but Arch just feels lean and quick. The difference isn't night and day, but you will notice it. So Arch Linux takes the performance point home. Stability can mean a lot of things to different people. But the inherent reliability of a system is one of the biggest factors you should consider when choosing an operating system. Ubuntu is built for rock-solid stability. It undergoes extensive testing before release and then provides a decade of support with updates. Now one thing you should keep in mind here is these updates emphasize security and bug fixes over new features. This means, yeah, you are going to be most probably using slightly older packages. That is, if you're not using snaps. But in my and almost everybody's experiences, this is a very logical trade-off and the stability benefits that we get from this delayed injection of newer packages is just invaluable. Arch Linux on the other hand, oh you're gonna love this. It doesn't have the concept of version releases. It's a rolling release distro. So we get updates continuously and when I say continuously, I mean pretty much on a daily basis. Now Arch Linux 2 has very thorough and deep testing process while still prioritizing latest software and features. The trade-off here is that there's a small but a non-zero chance that a new update might bring an unforeseen bug or just require your intervention. For example, if GNOME or the Linux kernel is a new version, Arch will immediately test it and push it to its users significantly faster than Ubuntu does. Now I have used Arch Linux as my daily driver for years and many people do too. And Arch is reliable. But you have to be proactive with maintenance with regard to Arch. You have to maintain backups. And now and then, your system needs your attention while Ubuntu is an install and forget system. Some people actually enjoy this kind of interaction with the system, but not everybody. You have to be mindful of this thing when choosing between these two. Ubuntu wins the stability round. Gaming is one area where Arch users and Ubuntu users fight toe to toe, both claiming their distro is the better one. But in my long gaming experience, both are exactly the same. I know it doesn't sound right. Yeah. Arch Linux has newer drivers, better Mesa versions, compatibility with newer hardware and other things that do make the gaming experience better, not gonna deny that. But Ubuntu is the, in quotes, reference distro that most games are tested and optimized for on the Linux platform. And Ubuntu generally supports newer hardware through its hardware enablement stack. And I generally prefer the stability of drivers on Ubuntu because things are more tested and dependable here. I use Nvidia hardware so. And nowadays, almost 100% of my gaming happens through Steam. And as you know, it's the same for most Linux users today. Yeah, even my non-Steam Windows games, I generally sideload into Steam because the Proton support there is phenomenal and everything just works with Steam. Yeah, I could use things like bottles or manually install Proton or Wine, but Steam just makes everything easier. And if you're gaming with Steam, it doesn't really matter if I'm on Arch Linux or Ubuntu because things are gonna work exactly the same. I actually tried many of the new gen gaming distros and I felt that gaming with Arch Linux or Ubuntu was simpler. I'm not going to take names here, but yeah. By sticking with either Ubuntu or Arch Linux, I didn't feel like I was losing out on much or losing out on anything as a matter of fact in terms of the gaming performance or the experience. So gaming on Arch Linux and Ubuntu is a great experience. You're getting good performance, setting up gaming is simple and you just have some fun. Both get a point each. Wrapping up my Fortnite experiment with Arch Linux and Ubuntu, I have to talk about the elephant in the room. Just how much one has to learn to make friends with Arch. When I had first installed Ubuntu decades ago, I remember it was simpler than I had expected. Within a day, I was browsing the web, working on LibreOffice and so on, and my overall learning curve was gentle. It was my first Linux distro, in fact it was my first operating system outside of Windows. So yeah, I had to learn things, but the point is, it was not overwhelming. Arch Linux on the other hand has a significant upfront learning curve. 
the installation itself is a learning exercise and even after installation you have to look up things to do even some basic things but once things are set up arch linux easily chugs along yeah these two distros are very different from each other and they are made for different people and throughout this video i hope i have laid out the information needed for you to choose the right distro for you all right it's time to give my personal point and i have to give it to ubuntu not because i love ubuntu more in fact it's arch linux that i enjoy using more it's just that ubuntu provides a well-rounded computing system for me i can work on it i can play on it i can just sit there and chill with this system and i didn't think i'd say this but i actually enjoy ubuntu's stability above all i can just focus on my work with ubuntu and by the total tally of points ubuntu wins this battle of the giants this has been a close fight and both the distros have brought in some serious advantages to the table. But Ubuntu has taken a slight lead to take the crown. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you are interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is the next X, signing out.